thank you very much, Paloma, for this very interesting talk. It was really inspiring. And uh, yeah, really nice sound in the background. <laughs> Um, I was one question, like if you say that um, also businesses should contribute more to open source and you also said like maybe, I mean, and we know also that not all companies are really culturally diverse. So how can they ensure that what they publish is really culturally diverse and what they put open source? Are there some mechanisms? Can you, maybe you thought about this already? Um, so not, not totally sure if I totally understand exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. um, because there's these two efforts and they go together, right? One thing is to, um, is the philosophy of open source and when they it meet like what company call like a day or a diversity, equity, sustainability, when you have those powerful forces saying there's something wrong in the business today, how can you make that change? Then you have like a this pushed for those changes. And one of the things is held and accountable of the amount of quantity of open source things we consume and saying, yo, we need to get back to the community and we do that. And the other thing is saying, yeah, but how we are doing that is also fundamental because it's not just pushing the same or doing a donation, like a capitalist philanthropy. It's not just about that. Of course it is important, but you just know what about that. It's making sure that um, all of these changes are coming from uh, representation, different kind of representations, and those representations are having the voice in the decisions, so in those le leaderships as well. <laughs> Does it make sense with your question? Yeah, so, um, like, of course, the, the code is influenced by who's writing the code and then also how it's published, so it's, um, yeah. So it should definitely start in our minds and also in the leadership uh, minds to become more diverse. Absolutely, but the cool part about the the open source, and that's why it's, um, we, we need to, I mean, it's so hard. Like I was asking in my head and I was looking for studies that says why there's such a um, significant amount of people contributing, of women, and but to be honest, not white male contributing to open source. and. Uh, I don't, life is hard, right? Like if you put everything, you have to deal with it and take care of life. Like, and I still need to make space for open source. It's so hard. So one of the ways uh, the what the open source programs offer to do is um, trying to make sure you have a pay time within the working hours to contribute back. And why is that important? Because uh, if the industry is totally reliant on open source and you make sure your employees are helping and you are because when you you're a contributor you're an individual inter contributor you're representing yourself um you are you are changing things and yeah so i severely defend that we should find this way and fight for this time to contribute more and of course we grow so much when we're doing this contribution and are there more tendencies that also companies um, or businesses give their employees the chance to contribute more do you see this i highly hope so it is a it is a lot of efforts for discussing strategies and that's why we have to be ready to say, uh, see, if I'm happy and I have like, I don't know, my Friday off to contribute, I will put more, I will be happier and I will bring more innovation on the table. And uh, making your managers or the, the people who help, the ones who have the power to decisions to understand this, um, is not so hard. It does, you, you probably need to have a talk for the proposal, have a period to say, let's try it on, let's see what happens. But it's not impossible and it is a much growing number of industries and yeah, and people doing this. Ospos are growing a lot and uh, this is one of the main actions that uh, it's important to reinforce. Thank you. You're so Thank welcome. you, Paloma, for your talk. Thank you all. <laughs>